Good morning and praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored that we can. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful name of Jesus, the power of God in our life, the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us and teaches your word to us. And Lord, we pray for our nation. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, and as such, you give the thanks. Be made from authority over us. So we thank the Lord for our president, our vice president, senators, and congressmen, the legislature, Supreme Court, Justice, Federal, State, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the Armed Forces, the FBI, the CIA, DHS. Lord, we claim their salvation. We ask sin labors across the path to minister the gospel to them. We decree and declare our nation is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. That Jesus is Lord of the United States of America. That we're a strong Christian nation. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We speak peace to our country in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, and then they should come. We ask you, Lord, to uh, send labors in. The people answer call to God and take the gospel out to all the world. From the top of the world, the bottom world, all the way around the world. That every day more sinners are receiving Jesus than the day before him. Every day more believers being baptized, the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and being taught about who they are in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we pray for all those ministries out there that's preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We thank you, Father God, for meeting all their needs in abundance. And Lord, I thank for anointing me today, and I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utterance to the Holy Ghost. And I pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers, your word, led by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's go over here to Numbers chapter 13. We read this story or testimony the other day. We'll go back here again. Now here in Numbers chapter 13, beginning in verse 25. This is where God, where the 12 spies went in and spy out the land, one from each tribe. They came back, all 12 of them came back and reported what they saw and what was going on. And this is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and Hebrews chapter 3, that what happened to them is an example of what happened to church. So we learn from this, their mistakes they made. Now the scripture says here, and they returned from searching out the land after 40 days. And they went and came and Moses and Aaron to all the congregation children of Israel until the wilderness of Paran and Kedish and brought back word to them. And to all the congregation showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, said, We came to the land when thou sent us, and surely full of milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in it. And the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, they saw the, M the children of Anak there. And Amkites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched, the children of Israel, or children, yeah, Israel, saying, The land, though which we have gone to search, is the land that's eaten up the habits thereof. And all the people we saw in it were men of great statues. And we saw the giants, the Anakites, that came the giants. We are on whose side is grasshopper, so are their side. And all the children lifted up their voice to God, and the people wept that night. And the children of Israel murmured against Moses, against Aaron, and the whole congregation said, Would to God be died in the land of Egypt, or would to God be died in the wilderness? And wherefore say, hath the Lord brought us out to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should be prey? Were not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said, well, let's, let us make, an, uh, make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Now let's go over here to Hebrews, please. Read here in Hebrews chapter 3. Now the scripture says, I'm going to pick up here in verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, how bit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses? But with whom was he, God, grieved forty years? Was it not with them that sinned, whose carcass fell to the wilderness, and whom he swore that they should not enter into his rest, but, them, but to them that believed not? We see they could not enter in because of unbelief. And then we'll go over here, let's go back here to 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And notice here what verse... Um, 13 says, We have the same spirit of faith, according as written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Now we see this how that they sent out these ten spies over to Israel, spy out the land. They came back and report unto them, and ten of them said we can't, and, and two said we can't. It was Caleb and Joshua who said we can't. And by doing so, by the people griping and murmuring and complaining, then they spun out of control and decided they're going to, you know, elect another captain to take Moses' place and Aaron's place. And this one, God had to intervene. Now here God had brought them out of the land that flowed you know, of, of Egypt to bring him in the land that flowed milk and honey. Remember, it took two guys to carry one cluster of grapes with a staff. And we need to realize that all they had to do is go possess the land. 
And what God has given us is promises in their new covenant. They belong to us. Jesus bought and paid for them, freely gave them to us. Now what we need to do is gain a knowledge of those first of all. We, we want to learn. You remember Jesus said, learn of me in Matthew chapter 11. So we want to learn everything he did for us, bought and paid for them, freely gave to us through his death, burial, and resurrection. And so many Christians, bless their hearts, they don't know that. And one of the reasons is, or, you know, they just really weren't interested in finding out or learning more about what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. So as believers, what we want to do is step, feed on the Word, stay in the Word every day to learn and re make ourselves familiar and go back over and just keep that maintenance up. They're always new in our mind to God's Word. Now, Caleb, spirit, uh, Caleb Joshua had this uh, other spirit. You know, this is the Bible school I went to. I've been to a few Bible schools. And um, I know this is the one our, the Lord sent me to. You know, we, we could be in a situation, most of us didn't have any money. But, you know, we had a spirit of faith. And uh, we always had victory. I know it's been many other schools, there wasn't that or isn't that. You know, they, they uh, like a dark cloud hung over them, or they got kind of kind of weird or cultish. What we have to realize is that God designed us to take the land. And what we, you know, who you hang around with is how you're going to turn out. You hang around people who's got a spirit of faith, and praise God, you're going to grow and develop spiritually. They're going to like iron sharpens iron. You'll learn more about what you should be doing, what you should be receiving. But so often, see that those ten spies, they, they didn't do that. You know, they they, got, they brought the murmuring to the people, and the people started complaining. The next thing you know, the people wept that night. They're worried about what's going on. They're not going to do what God told them to go take the land. So consequently, they end up dying there in the wilderness. They said, would to God we died in Would to God we died in Egypt? And that's where they end up going, by what they said. See, death and life and the power of the tongue, and by them rebelling against God, they end up losing their protection and what God had promised that belonged to them in and through Christ Jesus. So when we find out what God's Word says, we need to build on that. And it makes all the difference in the world how you believe because that's what's going to be your turnout. So, so often Christians struggle financially, barely getting by, sort of living like paycheck to paycheck or Social Security check to Social Security check, when they're not really living in abundance. One of the, one of the reasons is because of the mindset there, their mentality is like, just God will meet my needs and that's all. But God wants you to live in abundance. He sent Jesus that you might have life and more abundantly. He wishes above all things that you prosper and be in health. So every day what you want to do is focus on those promises that we have to know that Jesus became poor. Remember there in 2 Corinthians 8 9, for he knew through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we through his body might be rich. Well, some people just have a, and too, too many, have a, 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 you know, a poverty mentality. The, the, the way they talk, the way they see things, and the way they talk about money, and make j jokes and st statements about it. I can remember years ago, there used to be a popular bumper sticker that said, my, my take home pay is enough to take me home. And people think things like that are funny. You know, it's not, a, to live in lack's not funny. To, to, to barely get by is not funny. You know, but people think it's a joke and they make fun of, of their finances and say things about them. I'm sure before I used to work for a guy, and he's an elderly man, and to be joking around, he'd say towards the end of the week, he'd say, well, I know if I got any money left, I owe somebody something. And so people would laugh. They thought that was you know, kind of funny. I, I mean, I'm just you know, about 15 years old. I didn't think it was funny, but nevertheless, I don't think a lot of things, things are funny. But the point is, people have that mentality. Now, Caleb and Joshua, the people have a spirit of faith in a whole crowd. You know, theologians say there's two or three million people. And this is God had miraculously delivered his people time and time again. They were in trouble because they worshiped other gods and, and broke the laws. And so consequently, they lost their protection, got taken over by the people, taken captive, and became slaves in this, in Egypt. But God redeemed and delivered them. He got them out, he used Moses to get them out, lead them out of there. And they complained and murmured all the time. Well, we don't get ahead in life by complaining and murmuring. We need to realize that God wants us to live in divine health, live in divine protection, and enjoy the fruits of, that God's purchased for us through Jesus Christ, and, and enjoy all the benefit that God bought for us through Jesus, abundant life, prosperous life, healthy life, victorious life, more than conquerors, triumph in Christ Jesus, and every day just building yourself up on that. And I, sometimes I think about the guys I went to school with and gals, you know, in Bible school. We get together in one apartment and we're so excited about the Word. So we've been listening to cassette tapes and ABCDs. And we'd go over and we'd interrupt each other. It was like big, one big slumber party. 
talk about this and talk about how we're going to take the world for Jesus and everything else and what we heard, the latest the tape we'd got and the one to borrow for the other person, get their tapes that they got, they've been listening and, and build, constantly building ourselves up. That's what a spirit of faith does. And you want to get that spirit of faith and maintain it. Catch it. Catch that spirit of faith. And you get it from God's word and by hearing God's word preached all the time and then implementing that word. See, when you hear God's word, you think, how can I implement this? How can I put this in action? How can I apply this? How can I make my life better with these promises? And always focus on that. Meditate on the word day and night and not have that poor mentality. There's different kinds of poor mentalities. You know, the, the people have. One, one of them is that they, they don't love themselves. You, you can tell the way they treat themselves, the way they treat their body, and they treat their mind. And they're, you know, they, they, they disrespect their body. And that's a poverty mentality manifesting just in a different way. And I've seen people are, are poor in character. You, you can't rely on them. I'm talking about Christians now. You can't rely on them. You can't depend on them to be there. You know, and, and God needs us to be where we're supposed to be at, doing what we're supposed to be doing. He needs to rely on us, depend on us. So we limit God in our life when we don't do what we're led to do by Him. He'll lead us and let us know inside of our spirit what we want to do. And we need to follow that and be faithful to that, whatever it is, no matter how insignificant it may seem. If it's, if it's the Lord's leading you to do something, you want to make a big deal out of it. I mean, to me, it's real important to me to make a real big deal about what he wants me to do. I mean, that's something I work on every day. And I haven't arrived, but I'm working on it. And, and you want to always make sure you work on that, that you take the, the things of God very seriously because they're not joking matters. They're, depend, they're the difference between life and death. So we always want to be led by the Holy Spirit. We want to be people who speak God's word and resist the devil when he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We've got an adversary. We stand against him by the name of Jesus by speaking God's promise, decreeing, declare what God's word says, and just always going over it. What, what does the word say about this? Keeping our eyes focused on his word and our ears listening to his word because there's too many distractions where we'll distract you away from God's word to keep you from living in victory. Caleb and Joshua, they talk totally different than everybody else. I mean, of, of all the people, of all those people, they're the only ones talking this way. And you see, that it makes a difference. I noticed that when, when God began to raise up ministers to teach on confession, it was so difficult to get churches to get involved in it. And so many pastors preached against it. They, they you know, publicly declare they don't believe in all the confession stuff. And, you know, they, they said, you know, these people are claiming Cadillacs and everything. You know, I, I know a few people preach God's word. And, and, you know, they're not crazy. They're very established people. But pastors in many churches and denominations came against confession. And, and people were just vocalizing how they were against it. And they, they, I'm not, not name it, claim it. People write books for it and do programs against it. Now, how'd that work out for you? How are you doing today? You don't ever take sides with God's word. You may not quite understand something, but those people are getting results. And you get results by speaking to problems and calling those things that beat on the earth. You got born again that way with your mouth. And your body's gonna go away of your tongue. James taught us that in James chapter three. I mean, just like your car goes in the direction, your steering wheel, you know, providing you got a car that a person has to drive it. You know, they got the new ones now that they're gonna be driving themselves, pretty cool. But anyway, so that's gonna go the way. Well, our bodies go that way. And you need to be careful what you say about your body. You want to get this old age mentality that people always, everywhere they go, they have to tell you how old they are. I mean, you go to the bank, somebody come up and tell you, tell you how old they are. It's just, it's just amazing how people get that mindset. And when you talk that way, your body starts shutting down because your body knows what you mean. Your body's thinking you've heard everything else. It was negative about getting older. So when you start talking your age and, and you mean it that way, well, then what you're doing is that your body starts shutting down. And you'll notice that, you know, then you got a knee that doesn't work. Then you got an elbow that doesn't work. Then you got, no, those are things you want to resist right away. Your body needs you to keep talking to it. Your body, your body needs you to speak words of life to it and call those things, you know. Talk to your hair, talk to your eyes, talk to your ears. Blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. And keep on decreeing and declare what God's word says you are. And talk to your organs in Jesus' name. Just keep speaking God's word to them and decree and declare they're healthy and strong and vibrant that your youth is nude like the eagles. I can do all things through Christ. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let the weak say I'm strong. Why do we have all these promises for? To use in our body. Why do we have all these financial scriptures for? So we use in our, financial, for our finances and change our finances around to where we're living in abundance in Jesus' name, that we're not just barely getting by, 
and they're not worrying about our finances every day. And, and just have that mindset and to develop a habit. Wealthy people and successful people, they have habits. They start the day out in a certain way. And they always know exactly what their money's doing. A lot of times people live pay, pay, paycheck to paycheck. They, they don't have any idea what their money's doing. But successful people keep an eye on their money. And they always know exactly what's going up and what's going down, how the property value is and everything else. So they're very students over it. And they're, they're always learning. They're constantly learning, learning more and, and learning more. And learn, you can learn so much on the, inter, on the internet. I mean, take a college course on the internet. There's no excuses to stay dumb because you got free libraries even to go to. Even if you're homeless, you can go to the you go If you're homeless, you go to the library, get warm in the winter. Why not go in there and, and use the computer? Why not go in there and read the books that's in there? You can go on the computer if you can't read, and they'll read the book to you. So there's all ways that God put out here for people to be kept educated and not be lazy, not be procrastinate, but always do those things that's unfamiliar to you and uncomfortable. Keep on stepping out. The children of Israel weren't used to this freedom. You know, they get, they've been enslaved for 40, 40 years. Now they get over there where they're free, they don't know how to act. They don't, they don't know how to talk. And Caleb's trying to calm them down. He was un, unable to persuade them to go take the promised land. So he has to wander around for 40 years for these people until they die off. Because they got a year for every, every day they were over there. Finally, they all died off. Then they went and took the land like they were supposed to. And they marched around the walls for seven days. And then the seventh day, they shouted. That they marched around seven times. They shouted, and the walls came, came down to the earth. Well, they could have done this a long time ago. See, the, the promises are still there. And many of their people, they're very vocal about how they don't believe in divine healing. Christians, I've got people born again, preachers ministers you know that the vocalize again and against prosperity but you know the and they get they just kind of speared over to their church so their people end up believing this way you know many christian bookstores that we used to have were, were just books that were filled with doubt and unbelief it was hard to find find a faith building book you know i'd go to christian bookstores back when they had them until before i had a book table in my ministry and i'd, I'd go in and look for some brother hagan books they may have one or two and i'd talk to christian lady and say you know why don't you order some of these i'd like to send some people down here or over here and let them know in my bible studies that they'd come here and pick up some books here well we got this book well you know i'm not going to interested in those books those books are weak a lot of stuff in the christian bookstore is not going to build your faith it's just going to make you feel better about your struggles and that god wants to torture you and make your family struggle no, God wants you to live in victory. So I tried to get them to order books like the authority to believe. I finally gave up. I just thought you had to get my own book table. People can come and get the books and tapes there. And now CDs and sheets and everything else. Well, you, you, as you travel, I travel. So as you travel, just take that with you. You know, I'm always, we're always setting up and breaking up and setting up and breaking up and going on to the next meeting, doing services. Well, taking the word out to the people so they can get a hold of it. Because so many places that did not have it, they weren't, you know, weren't being fed properly. And you need to feed yourself on God's word and, and homeschool yourself on God's word. Keep listening to it taught constantly. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we always want that faith coming to us and not act like we know it all, but just absorb it and learn every day. And those 10 spies persuade the people. Again, remember Caleb said 45 years later, that my brother melted the people's hearts. Think about what they did. By the way they talked, it, it discouraged the children of Israel from going in. They believed the ten spies. They didn't believe Caleb and Joshua. They believed the other people. The other people acknowledged it. It does flow with milk and honey. Nevertheless, yeah, we'd say, yeah, but. And so often pastors talk that way. You don't want to go to church that preaches that God doesn't always heal and God gets glory out of being sick. That's going to affect you. I can tell where your future is by the people you hang around with and the people you go to church with. It's just a law. Well, who you hang around with, you're going to turn out to be like. They're losers, you'll be losers. They don't have victory, you won't either. They're always complaining and talking about, you know, how sick they are and everything. You'll get so, you'll talk that way. The Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, you're real careful. Remember when your kid's little? I didn't, my daughter, I'm going to find out who she's going to run around with. I'm going to see who she, you know, she wants to go to the movies or whatever. I want to find out, you know, who this person is. Because why? Because she's valuable to me. Well, your spiritual life should be very valuable to you. Your life should be very valuable to you. And you want to be just very careful what you listen to. Now, I try to minister to all kinds of people. You know, I'm not better off, better than anybody else, but I'm better off than other people. 
by schooling myself in God's Word. And you want you can be self-educated with God's Word because there's so much information out there. You want to constantly let it in and build your spirit man up on God's Word and constantly renew your mind to God's Word. And not talk like these other ten spies. This is They brought up an evil report. They shouldn't have said this. It cost these people their lives by the way they talked. I mean, we read there before in Luke chapter 13, when Jesus saw that woman's boat over 18 years, could no wise lift up herself. Jesus said, woman, thou art loose and firm me. He laid his hands on her, she's made straight. Now look what her pastor did, the minister she had. He said there's six days. You know, he answered with indignation. That means he's angry. There's six days in which men ought to work. People got real strong feelings against divine healing. They always have, just like tongues and just like prosperity. And so people hear this stuff in church. And so that's their mentality that they have. That's their belief because they heard this stuff. They heard in church that God doesn't always heal. You didn't hear that in a bar or some nightclub. You heard that in church, that God doesn't always heal. God puts sickness on you to teach you something. God gets glory of being sick. And people write books on that to help people keep on staying sick. And then taught things against tongues. Tongues are of the devil. And then also taught things of anti-prosperity. Didn't like the prosperity teachers. Didn't like those prosperity preachers. And wrote books against them. How about this? Wrote books against them. Yeah, published books against them. You see how crazy people can get? Just because they start listening to their voice? It was God's idea of prosperity. This wasn't these preachers' idea. They just found out in the Word of God. You could learn something from them. You could start changing. You, you could learn something from your hygienist and start flossing and brushing your teeth so you can keep your teeth. A friend of mine said, which teeth should I floss? I said, just the ones you want to keep. He wasn't looking forward to doing this because it took extra time. And people get real lazy. And they, lose, they end up losing out in life. No, you have to motivate yourself. You're pushing yourself. You're always putting demands on yourself to do more. And not complain. And not gripe. And not bellyache. And not whine. And not... You know, become a, have this victim mentality because it affects people, it affects the whole country. People, you know, that have victim mentalities cause a lot of problems. I've seen them wreck churches before. The pastor didn't know what to do with it, how to deal with it. I said, Well, tell them to go to some other church that has victim mentality. Have them go to the church that it's not your fault because that's what people want to hear. It's not your fault. And we have whole denominations will teach you it's not your fault or teach you how to cope with some demon or sickness or disease. So there's plenty of churches. I said, I'm going to those churches. You just keep preaching the word, instructing your people, build your people up. Because we don't want the church to turn out like they did with Caleb and Joshua's day. They're known as a church in the wilderness. And Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. Faith calls those things out be, be not as though they were. And see, when we heard that taught, other pastors said, well, that's lying to say that. So they told their people, you don't do that because that'd be lying to say you're healed. The Word says you're healed. The truth is what God says. He says you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. He says you're the righteousness of God in Christ. He says you're more than a conqueror. That's what he calls us. He says we're believers. So if we're believers, we believe. We believe what he said. But then people are taught that you should name and claim it. And so their whole congregation is afraid to name and claim it. I had people come to me and question me about what I taught because they heard in church against it. You want to be careful what church you go to because all you have to do is hear that God doesn't always heal from a preacher, a minister, a pastor, or whatever they are, and that seed gets planted. And you may not think much about it, but then when you get in a situation, you got some kind of physical crisis, you're going to think, well, now God doesn't always heal. You won't think, well, now maybe God doesn't always heal, heal but bless God, he's going to heal me. You won't think that way. You'll think about the negative part. The negative overtook the children of Israel. It spread through. The toxic spread through the whole camp like a virus, like a disease. Like a plague. A plague of unbelief. A plague of doubt. And it affected the whole... And they all died over it. Because of what they said, except for the kids. They all died over it in Caleb and Joshua and their families. It was Rahab the harlot that wondered why they hadn't already came. We were afraid of you. Now you had the children of Israel afraid of them. So they didn't go possess it. It does make all the difference who you hang around with. And I'd encourage you not to hang around people who have poor mentalities. That talk negative about healing, negative about tongues, negative about prosperity. Try to minister to them. But they just made up their mind they're not going to succeed in life. Jesus said you're always going to pour with you. Because there's always going to be people that's going to reject the gospel. Reject God's word. Reject God's teaching. And then judge people that teach it. 
I mean, the prosperity preachers still go, went all right on. They didn't, you know, give up their jet. But they went through all the complaints. And the people complaining are not successful people. They're not happy people. They don't, they don't have victory in their life. So they have to put down the people. Just like they got mad at Moses. They got mad at Aaron. They didn't like what Caleb and Joshua said. They didn't like the idea Caleb said, but he said, let's go about months and take it. So what they do? They murmur and complain and cried all night long. And they eventually got what they said. And you eventually get what you say. It's just a spiritual law. This world and the worlds are framed by words. God spoke in existence. It operates by words. Everything in this world you have authority over as a believer. So you want to bless your country, speak blessings to it, and decree and clear what God's word says. And call those things that be not as though they were. Begin to find out what the word says about the way it should be and speak blessings to it. And call it blessed. Talk to your feet if you got feet problems. Talk to your, you know, arms or legs or elbows if you got something. It's just saying you got tennis elbow or you got this knee injury from playing football in high school. Don't talk that way. Speak to your knee. needs you to talk to it. He can't do this himself. Your knee's innocent. He needs you to speak to it. Your arms need to be, and not giggle about it, but take it real seriously and speak God's word to it. And decree and clear what God's word says about this. So forget about all those people that's whiners and complainers and real losers. You know, pray for them. Believe God their eyes be open up. But don't let that affect you. It affected the congregation of Israel so much, they all died over it. They didn't stop it. And Caleb tried to. And so did Joshua. They tried to stop. But they couldn't do it. Because they couldn't get the people to believe them. They were unable to persuade the people. Un un unpersuasiveness is what happened. Because of the people's unbelief. They chose to believe what the other ten said. We choose to believe what God says about it. He says the land belongs to us, that he's already given it to us, then let's head out. And that's the kind of people we need. We need people to step out and take what God has promised. And God's going to have a generation that does it. You could be part of it. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for the wonderful name of Jesus. The name is above every name. We give you all the praise and glory that Jesus our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us, deliver us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now I want to pray with you if you never received Jesus as your Lord or you, you're not too sure if you have. I'll read the description. I want you to pray this prayer with me so you can get saved today. Now the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in the heart God is raised to death, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believes the righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Verse 13, for whosoever called upon him, Lord, shall be saved. Now, when you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're guaranteed to go to, to be with Jesus when you die because of what he did for us. So let's pray this prayer together. Receive Jesus, the Lord. Amen. All right, say this to me. God, I come to you. Just say these words. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I believe Jesus crucified, died on a cross, took my sins so I could be forgiven and have eternal life. Thank you, Father God, for giving me Jesus, your only begotten Son, and for saving me from going to hell. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you just received Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Now you got a, a guarantee for eternal life and make it to heaven when you leave this earth. Amen. I want to encourage you to get on our website. If you got a prayer request, and email me your prayer request. If you don't have this divine healing scripture sheet, I want you to get it. If you got it, I want you to start using it. It's two sides of scriptures. Do it at least every day. A few times a day, the more you do it, the more you're going to build up into God's Word and be fully persuaded and convinced about what God's Word says about you. If you're not receiving my newsletter in the mail, it comes like this. These are awesome. I read them. They're really good. I like them. And uh, they help me. There's many times I read this. I thought I wished I'd got a letter like this at one time. They're going to really help you because they're full of God's Word, teaching how to apply God's Word. So I want to encourage you. God gave me a teaching gift. I want to encourage you to use it. Read it when you and when you read it, read it several times. But if you're not on the main list, you need to get on it. Give us your address, and you can email that in. Give us your email address. You get the daily devotion. That's an excellent message. Comes out every day in the morning. You can receive that and have it sent to you. So when you get your emails there, you can read it. Read it. It's good. Read it before you read anything else about the news or anything else. I really enjoyed being with you today. I want to encourage you. Keep speaking God's word. Keep yourself built up in God's word. Keep rejoicing and thanking God that everyone your needs are met in abundance. And share Facebook with other people and our YouTube channel. 
So they'll, they'll know about it. The more people we get on board, the more people can learn God's word. We take the land for Jesus Christ. So enjoy your day. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.